This is the Jaeger 118-G from Reich Knives, a quality budget knife made in China. I've been testing it now for about five months. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on it, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I just wanted to declare that this knife was sent to me for testing and review, and I did not pay for it. However, I'm receiving no compensation for the making of this video or any sales of these knives. So uh, let's go for a little bit of a backstory first. And basically, I had seeing these knives come up on my YouTube feed as something being tested. I took a closer look at them. I checked out the price of them and I was impressed with not only the quality, but the quality for the price. So I reached out to the company here in Canada that imports these knives and they agreed to send one to me. And I, as I said, I've had it for a good period of time now, enough that it has appeared in a number of my videos. And I think I can probably give you a pretty good rundown and not only an overview, but a fairly long-term use review of this knife. So what we're gonna do is I'll bring the camera in a little closer so I can give you some close-up of the knives of the knife and as I do I'll give you some statistics on this knife and of course we'll do a little bit of demonstrations of what it's capable of and then we'll wind up with some of my thoughts in terms of pros and cons for this knife. All right let's take a closer look at the Reich Jaeger 118-G. G standing by the way for the green micarta version of the handle scales on this and uh, we're going to go through all the specifications for this knife but uh, in case I miss any I'll be putting everything in the video description description below for your reference as well as where you can purchase this and any other interesting information. Now it is worthy of note this sheath itself so I'm going to take the knife out and I'm going to lay the knife down just for a moment while we talk about the sheath because this is a really a key component and has some unique features not seen on a lot of any actually any other sheath that I have so let's take the knife out. So the sheath is ABS plastic. It is not Kydex, but for this style of uh, sheath and knife, I don't think uh, Kydex is necessary. I know it seems to be the gold standard, but a well-crafted ABS sheath is certainly every bit as good, in my opinion. And the sheath is very basic. It does have a thumb ramp push-off, which is nice. It does have a bit of an adjustable tension device here and a spot that you can... It almost rolls where the knife edge can roll over and lock in. So uh, it's hard to say whether this is going to have long-term durability. I don't know, five months. I would say it's working out pretty good considering it's been my primary carry knife. But what makes this sheath stand out is the belt clip and the way it functions. So it is a curl over, if you will, so you can either feed your belt through or you can slide it on your belt after you have your belt on your pants, of course. But what's unique about this is the fact that it has this little lever right here, see if I can catch that, and you can press down on this and turn this 10 different positions. So if you can't find a comfortable angle for your knife on your belt with that, I don't know what you're going to do but this allows a whole lot of adjustments it's a, it's actually really really nice now there are some cons to the sheath i'll mention right up now personally i prefer a sheath that is lower on the belt now you can see how high that would ride on my belt and if i had no backpack no jacket on oh that's okay in fact i was wearing this cross draw on uh, my sh on my uh waist and it worked out very well because you can adjust it to the perfect angle for cross draw. Problem is if you were in a backpack that has a huge hip belt then this is going to be in the way of the hip belt unless you can get the hip belt really high. So the sheath does have that downfall. I would prefer to have some type of an extension that would drop it down. That's why all my other knives have a dangler loop on it so I can get it well below the belt or the waist belt of any backpack that I'm wearing but other than that, there is nothing negative to say about this. Let's put the knife back in so you can see how it rides inside. Snaps in very satisfactorily. It's not in a long ways, but here's where the retention is, is right here. I'm not going to give it huge shakes because I know if I shake it hard enough, and you can probably do that with just about any sheath, you're liable to have it fall out. But, you know, for everyday use, I have not had this fall out. It's just, it's been secure enough. Will it be in the long term? Again, hard to say. That thumb ramp is nice for pushing off and to pass the, the uh, retention area there. 
And one thing I'll say about what, the way I've been carrying it now during the winter is I've been actually placing this in the pocket, the front pocket of my pants so that it clips on here and it's in my pocket. That takes it all below the belt level on my backpack and uh, it's worked out really well. Is it the ideal way of carrying a knife? No, of course not. But I found that that hook system prevents it from being pulled out. But uh, um, I'm not recommending, I'm just saying that it's working for me. So it is an option if you wanted to you carry it that way. All right, let's take a closer look at the knife. Now I have some cheat notes here, so I'm gonna be going over those as we discuss this. So let's talk about who this knife is for. How do you classify this knife as I give you some close-ups? Well, it, I've heard it referred to as a survival knife. I don't think it is a survival knife, but what then again, what is a survival knife? It's the knife you have on hand when you're in a survival situation. Will it do survival tasks? Absolutely. It will do everything necessary for you to survive a situation where you need a knife in the woods, but I would not take this out as my first choice as a survival knife, and we'll talk about why in a moment. Well, is it a bushcraft knife? No, it's not a bushcraft knife either, because in my opinion, and again, it all, definitions will vary, a bushcraft knife is something that is primarily designed for use in wood, with wood. So everything from carving uh, tent stakes to making bow drill sets to, uh, well, feather sticking, batoning, whatever it is you do with your bushcraft knives, that's why they're usually done with a Scandinavian or zero grind down in the last portion of the blade so that you get maximum thickness, not only for the majority of the blade, but right out to a very stiff or stout tip on it. So this is not a bushcraft knife. Will it work as a bushcraft knife? Absolutely. That's what I've been using it for for the last five months, but uh, it is not intended primarily as a bushcraft knife. Well, is it a hunting knife? Well, I'm no longer a hunter, but if I was, I would probably say, yes, I can use this for hunting. It is probably more knife than I would need for hunting. It's uh, quite a stout knife, but it does have a nice upswept blade drop point here. We'll talk more about this in a second. And a thin edge so I can use it for cutting up meat. So what is it? If it's not of those, I'm referring to this as a utility knife. Something that I'm going to have or on my belt or a companion knife, either way you want to look at it. Companion knife, utility, a utility knife, something capable of doing all the tasks even though it doesn't excel at any one of them. But I'll tell you what I really like about this, and that is this high saber, almost full flat grind. And the reason I like that is for food preparation. This I've used for, for preparing a number of meals all summer long, and now into the fall and here into December. And that full flat grind has served me very, very well. Now, as you'll see, it's not perfect for feather sticking with, it's not perfect for batoning or splitting wood with, but it still works. All right, let's go over a few of the specifications for the knife. So overall, the weight of this knife is 190.5 grams or 6.72 ounces. The overall length of this knife is 100, or excuse me, 221 millimeters or 8.7 inches. The blade length comes in at 112 millimeters or 4.41 inches. The blade height from the edge to the spine comes in at 33 millimeters or 1.3 inches. The blade thickness is 4.5 millimeters or 0.1, sorry, 4.5 millimeters or 0.18 of an inch. Now, when you look at the back of the spine, it's a little misleading. It does look fairly thick, but four and a half millimeters, it doesn't look that thick. And the reason for that is the spine is rounded. It is a very smooth, rounded spine. And uh, so it's a little misleading when you look at it that way, but I measured it at the thickest point right up here at the top, and it does come out at 4.5 millimeters. Now the handle is 109 millimeters or 4.29 inches, and the handle width is 20 millimeters or 0.79. So that's through here, and that's significant, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So some of the other features, as I mentioned, it is nearly a full flat grind. Let me put it this way so you can see the right logo on it. It is nearly a full flat grind. It just has, I'm going to refer to it as a high saber. It has a false wedge, the forward part of the blade, but it is rounded right out to the tip. It does have jimping back here 
it's functional, it's not sharp, and you know, it, for my uses, I don't really see the need for jimping, but it's there, it doesn't get in the way, so it works okay. The, the rest of the stock, as it runs through the scales, is what they call proud. In other words, it's a little raised above the handle scales. It's not flush, but it's not uncomfortable because of that rounded edge. It's just slightly proud. You should be able to see it in that direction there. The handle scales are well contoured, and you can, should be able to see that they do have some, that classic Coke bottle shape. It has a deep, Choil here for the finger, uh, not my favorite, but it doesn't hurt it. I'm not sure what this lanyard loop is for. Maybe if you considered it a survival knife and you wanted to lash it to a stick, that's a, they're available to you. To me, it is an unnecessary uh, extra on there, but it does give me a bit of a guard, which is handy in uh, stabbing motions on, well, for me, wood. That's all I'm going to be able to be stabbing with this. It does have a little hole for a small lanyard. And the only lanyard I carry in my knives these days are ones that uh, I know if I drop the knife I'll make it easier for me to see. It is that handle scales again that green layered micarta has a nice uh, texturing to it is the best way to say. So it's a good texturing. They are held on with torque screws and they are intended to be removed and there is some skeletization inside. So those are all my feature. One of the key things I haven't mentioned yet about this knife, which really drew it to me, and one of the reasons I really wanted to test it out, is the steel itself. So this is a 14C28N Swedish stainless steel, and it's hardened to a 58 to 60 on the Rockwell. And I can attest to this taking a very sharp edge. It does take a little bit of work, but not that bad. A very, very sharp edge and retains it for a good long period of time. So those are the basic specs for the knife. One last thing I could say about it. It does have a stoned washed finish, which is not shiny, not especially dull, just a nice matte surface to it. Okay, I think what we should do now is uh, do a little bit of testing with the knife and uh, then we'll come back and I'll give you my thoughts on this and we'll close out the video. So I just cut a lower limb off of a white pine tree for this demonstration. The piece I have is about 12 inches long, inch and a half, inch and three quarters in diameter, well dried. I cut it off as close to the trunk as I could and I think I'll just show you a little bit of a bonus score. Should be able to see all that dark, nice copper, brownish color all around the outside. Fat wood. So that fat wood probably extends probably about up to here so I can split out and have a little fat wood for my fire kit. But we'll set that aside and see now if we can't first off baton down this section of wood, quarter it into something I can uh, then make feather sticks out of. So this is probably as large a piece of wood as I would baton with a knife this size. Uh, knives are not meant to, for batoning big pieces of wood. Little pieces, yes, but not huge pieces. That is dry. Didn't go down straight, but... And that may be due to a few knots inside of it. Let's see if we can take a, another section off. All right, we're getting down to something a little bit more manageable. Not splitting especially straight, but uh, that's what pine does sometimes. I think we're getting a little closer. I think we'll go one more split. And we'll try a little bit of feather sticking on it. Yeah, I think we have something we can work with now. There's a couple pieces here. Put that one aside. All right. Start off slowly.
try to capture the first number of curls. And yes, this is not quite as easy a use to knife a knife as one with a Scandinavian or a zero grind. I would say mostly because it's just a matter of becoming familiar with the the knife and finding the edge. Some knives are easier to adapt your skill level to. Finding the edge, as it's called, if I curl down like this, I get some finer curls. See if I can get some really fine curls now. A little light touch. It's these fine curls that you can use to catch a spark with. And again, this is certainly not a tutorial on feather sticking. I'm not the person to give that one, but it's all about practice, choosing the right piece of wood. And if your feathers fall off, don't worry about it, just gather them up. They make, in my opinion, sometimes better kindling if you take the feathers off of the stick and then you can apply them as you need to. Oops. Okay, I wouldn't call that a great feather stick, but it's a feather stick nonetheless. It's enough that if I had two or threes together, and I could easily get that from this little section of pine, then I could create a fire. Let's see if we can do a little bit of notching with another piece of the wood. Oh boy. All right, maybe we'll split this one little more, one piece more and see what we can't do a little notching with it. Now just, uh, we'll pretend that this is sharp on one end and we're going to create a tent peg. So I'm going to create a, an L7 type of a notch. That went through very quickly. An L7 type of a notch for a tent peg, assuming that the other end was sharp enough for doing that with. Using it backhanded. And the chest lever. Hogging off some pretty good pieces of material. Works for that. Fine work right at the tip. Works nicely for that. I like using this in that scissor action off of my thumb because of that rounded spine does a gr is, you know, very comfortable. Not good for striking a ferrocerium rod, but beautiful for doing carving work. And that fine tip on this works really well for carving out at the tip. One last split. This is something you may not want to try with all knives, but with that deep guard, if I was looking to create some even finer kindling, this is a little large to demonstrate it with, but we'll give it a shot. With that deep guard, I'm not concerned about my hand slipping down on the knife. All right, I think it does all the tasks you want from a knife you're going to be used for bushcrafting. So what are my thoughts on the Reich Jaeger F118-G knife? Well, part of the reason I asked for this knife to be sent to me so that I could test it and bring it to you was its price. So I, I consider this a higher end budget knife. Now, 
what's a budget knife? You'll have to determine for yourself whether or not you consider this a budget knife at the price that you can get it for. But in my opinion, this is a high quality knife. Yes, it's made in China, but this is certainly at the top end of anything I've seen come out of China. Very well crafted, very well put together, and the performance is uh, comparable to anything I've used anywhere. So that's the reason I wanted to bring it to you. I think this is good value for the money. So that's some of the nice things I can say about it. What else can I say about it? The steel. Absolutely loving that uh, Swedish uh, steel. This, of course, would be the same one that's used in the Mora Garberg knife. And uh, that's part of the reason why I wanted to try it, to see how well it would compare. And I can find no fault with the blade steel at all. What else can I say about it? The handle scales are really nice looking. They're really comfortable, but they're a little thin for my extra large hands. Now, if I keep this knife, which I'm likely going to, it would be easy enough for me to put some liners in this that would make it wider across the width of the, the, the handle here. And I think that would help out with my hand a lot. Of course, then again, it's not gonna fit that sheath any longer and I'll be looking to have another sheath made for it. Um, I don't think I mentioned this. There are scallops right here which help with reverse grips so that you can place your thumb in the scallop when using it uh, in a chest lever type of a motion. Okay, those are most of the things that I can say nice about it. But I can say that, okay, this is both a pro and a con. That rounded spine will not strike a fire steel. It will not strike a ferrocerium rod and, and create any sparks. Is that a deal breaker? I don't think so. Uh, you know, it's not the only way I would use my ferrocerium rods. I have other things that I can use for striking the fire steel. If I was planning on this being my primary tool for striking it, I could easily create a 90 degree edge down the back of that and it would work just fine. The reason I haven't done so is because, you know, I really like that rounded edge when it comes to carving. When you're pushing on this with your, the back of your thumb here, your thumb here in a lever motion, after a bit of time, a sharp edge on a spine can really wear on your fingers. Having that rounded edge um, is actually very, very comfortable for carving purposes. I don't see any need for the swedge on this knife. I know it makes it look nice. It doesn't add anything to either the function of the knife or at least the type of use that I have. Again, not a deal breaker, something I just assumed was not there. The little hole on the guard, Again, not something I would like to have, but it doesn't hurt that it's there. Um, I guess the things that make this almost a deal breaker for me is the length of the handle. For some reason, I thought it was going to be a little longer until I got it. Now, 90% of the people who use this will find this just size, just fine. You have to remember that I have XL to double XL size hands. So not only is this not going to be wide enough through here, it's likely not going to be long enough here. So you can see uh, it disappears in my hand and I do have a pair of fingerless gloves on because it's cold out, of course. So I can functionally work with it, but after doing carving for a length of time, I'm finding that I'm grabbing tighter than I need to in order to stay, keep my hand on the knife or keep a good control over it. And that gets tiring in the hand all over, right up into the wrist and that you eventually start to feel it all the way up your arm. Shouldn't have to hold on to a knife that tight. And that is mostly because of the size of the handle. A little short, and a little narrow. Not so bad in this direction, but in this direction and in the length. The only other thing I can say that makes it a little challenging to use as a bushcraft knife is the heel right here, bit pointed. Big deal, Not again, not a deal breaker, but if I'm holding it in a reverse grip like this, it then pushes into the palm of my hand right there. So as I'm pulling across a piece of wood in a chest lever grip, it tends to push in. I didn't notice it today when I was doing it because of course I had gloves on, but when I have uh, no gloves on, then it is a little bit more of a concern. Having said that, I don't work with wood that much with knives. Uh, I do some very small batoning. I do some small carving. I'll do some small splitting. I don't do a lot of wood carving when I'm out in the woods. I think my knife gets used more for food prep than anything else. And that's where this knife excels, at least to me. Okay, those are my thoughts on the knife. To wrap it up, I would say that this makes a good, high-quality, budget knife 
in a premium steel. It's not one of the super steels, but it is as good a steel as for any of my needs for sure. Uh, what I'll do, of course, is provide you all the information of where you can purchase this knife if you're interested in it. And if you have any comments on this knife that you want to provide, then please put those in the comments section below. If you have any other knives that you want me to try to get a hold of to review, please put that in the comments section below. I do already have a couple of other budget knives, some probably in the same price range and a few in a much less expensive price range that I'll be bringing back to you after I spend more time with them. But again, if you have any of the comments on the Reich Jaeger 118 F118-G, then put them in the comment section. Okay, that's all I have for you today. In the, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.